Hey guys, welcome back to the Jen Bug Handmade Podcast. I'm Jen. I am a knitter. I am a nurse. I am a mama and I am coming to you from outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. So thank you so much for tuning back in. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Jen Bug Handmade and you can find me on Ravelry as Knit and Jen. So welcome back. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who showed so much love and support for my waffles with cream pattern. It is out on Ravelry. Uh, I am so happy that even one of you wanted to knit my pattern. So thank you guys so much. It means the world to me. I really, it really does. Um, and uh, every penny made from that pattern is going right back into this podcast and into stash enhancement and giveaways. So I really appreciate it. Uh, and I will have a new pattern coming out pretty soon. So stay tuned in the podcast to check that out. Um, but in the meantime, um, we are going to announce the giveaway winner. So hang tight until the end of the podcast so you can see who won. And I will be doing a new giveaway also at the end of the podcast. So stay tuned. Um, if you are enjoying my podcast, please consider giving me a like on the video and a subscribe. So that way we can get it out there for more people and have a lot of fun. So anyways, first of all, so this is like my third time filming this podcast, just so you know, uh, my phone keeps refusing to save the video. I don't know why. So bear with me here, but I wanted to show off, I finished my Randall Fraser sweater. So I did do a 10 minute refilm yesterday of me wearing that sweater because I was all styled and wearing it, you know, so I had to um, refilm then. So check that out here. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop on here real quick and show off my new finished object. This is the Randall Fraser sweater by Mika John from the Outlander Knitting Book. Uh, let me move my chair here. So this is a yoked pullover sweater, color work sweater, and yeah, I love it. I am very happy with how it turned out. Um, the yarn is Plymouth Yarn Quaker Hill, um, and this yarn was um, purchased at the Knit and Coop and gifted it to me by my mom bug, which is awesome. The colors are taupe, black, and natural is the white. So yeah, this sweater was a ton of fun in it. Um, it was a super easy pattern. There was no shaping in this pattern. I did do some mods, which I will tell you about, but, uh, yeah, just a really easy color work yoke sweater. You just follow the color work. Really fun. Um, I did do short sleeves. I think that this will be really nice in, you know, the spring, the fall. I think I can wear this over a dress. I can wear it over like a white turtleneck or even a black turtleneck or um, even like a button up shirt. So I'm really excited to add this to my wardrobe. I, you know, have been really wanting to add my own hand knit sweaters um, and things that I can wear. And I also think that the way that I did a little bit of shaping on this, that I can wear this in even if I were hopefully to, you know, keep losing weight. So that's exciting. So the modifications that I did on the bottom of the sweater, she had it where you just knit, 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 knit it straight. And then you went down a needle size into the ribbing and bound off in a stretchy bind off. Well, I did not do that. I, the very last row before the ribbing, um, I decided to do some decreases. So since this pattern was worked over six stitches, it carried down here as well in the same like um, circuit. So like basically the circumference of these stitches down here were divisible by six. So what I did was I knit five and then knit two together, knit five, knit two together. And I did that all the way around and decreased quite a bit um, right before the ribbing. So that kind of draws it in a bit. And then I did the ribbing, a one, the one by one rib, like in the pattern. And instead of a stretchy bind off at the bottom, I decided to do a tighter bind off because I wanted it to kind of suck in a bit. Cause I like, I like that look on me. That's a good look for this crop sweater. And it actually, I feel like looks more true to the sweater that Brianna wears in the Outlander show. And I'll put a picture um, that I found up here as well of her in her version of the sweater. Uh, I do. And also the sleeves. So I made them shorter. And what I did was I knit a few rows 
after the white. Actually, I knit one row of the and the natch this taupe color after these white stitches right here. And then I did that same knit five, knit two together all the way across. Then I did the one by one ribbing. But I did do the stretchy bind off on the sleeves. And the reason being is it's the sleeves and you know your arms are gonna fill that out and nobody likes for a uh, tight sleeve. That's not cool, man. So there's lots of room, but it, it also sucks in a bit since I did those decreases. So I really like that. So I love the way it fits. It's super comfortable. Um, yeah, if I hadn't have done this tighter bind off, I think it would have flared out and I would not have liked that. But this is super flattering, I feel like, on me and I really love it. And hopefully it'll still look cute if I lose a little bit more weight and I can wear it over a dress, I can wear it with a high skirt, some jeans, um, leggings, cause leggings is what I wear like 95% of the time. So yeah, very happy with this. The pattern was super easy. I did mess up each sleeve in a different way. So the first sleeve, if you look at this closely, you see this black triangle right here? The point of this is supposed to be in the middle of the triangle. It got shifted a little bit. Whatever. I didn't care about that that much. Just a design feature. I would have cared probably had it been like in the main body. That would have obviously been a little bit worse. But it's just a sleeve and it looks fine. It's a design feature now. So it is 100% unique. Okay. And then this sleeve, I didn't even realize until I was blocking. I had the sweater soaked and I was hanging it up and something was off and I was looking at the sweater. I'm like, this sleeve just isn't hanging the same way as this one. I had omitted two rows in this diamond right here. So that was a little bit ridiculous. Um, so at that point it was already soaking and hung up to block. The way I block my sweaters is I soak them. And then I gently squeeze out the excess water. I roll it up in a towel to squeeze out the rest of the excess water. I hang mine on a hanger over my sink. And then I put a few clothespins along here on top of the hanger to um, just keep it from slipping down and falling off. And that way it can drip into my sink if needed. I, I have like this uh, wire shelving thing. I don't know where I can hang stuff. Or I clothespin my knits in my laundry room. So it's pretty cool. Even though it's like one of them cheap wire shelves. You can, you can, uh, block real well on them. So anyways, what I did was I let it finish drying and blocking. And then I went back and I, once it was dry and I ripped it out, I re -knit the sleeve, the properly, just, just a couple inches. So it didn't take long. It was just long enough to be super annoying. re -knit this part. And then I didn't want to re-block the whole sweater. So I ended up just, um, so I soaked the sleeve only. I had it like hanging over the sink where the sleeve was just dipped in. And then I rehung it up and let it dry. So yeah, fun stuff. And now it's completely blocked. It's super soft. Oh my gosh. Um, Robin uh, from the Knit and Coop helped pick out this yarn. And she picked out the perfect yarn for the sweater. It is amazing. It's 50% alpaca, 50% highland wool, which is super fitting since this is an Outlander inspired sweater. Okay. So yeah, I love it. It is, it is fuzzy and like, uh, animally. So if you're sensitive to like those itchier yarns, and it might not be for you. I don't have any issue with them. I think it's great. I actually was modeling this outside and it's like 77 degrees here today and the burbs are rally. So and I was not that hot like at all. So I think this is great. I think it's gonna be really warm when it's cold, but also like wool is also kind of moisture wicking, I think. Um, I think that's why those Allbird shoes are so awesome. I love my Allbird shoes. Uh, so yeah, I'm in love with this sweater. And I'll put a picture of me wearing uh, this, modeling this. And check out these boots I'm wearing. They are from The Root Collective. And they are an ethical um, company. They make jobs or they provide jobs for artisans in Guatemala who help make their shoes and bags. I have a couple pairs of their shoes and one of their bags and I love them all. 
and um, I plan to get more as they release new styles. Uh, they're expensive, but totally worth it because they're the items that you can get, like take to a cobbler and get them to, you know, recobble your leather. 100% like amazing uh, materials and ethically made. So really cool. I love those boots. I get lots of compliments on them. So just as a side note, not sponsored. I just really love them. Uh, yeah. So this will go into my wardrobe of things that I've made and I'm really excited to make more sweaters this year. Let it be the year of the sweaters and, um, yeah, just adding to my wardrobe. So, uh, back to the podcast. Yeah. So that sweater was a lot of fun. Um, I, you know, I'm really looking forward to buying more, um, are making more of my own garments and having a more ethically made wardrobe. So that is a lot of fun. I think it'll, you know, fit me even if I were to keep losing weight, which I hope to do. I have lost about 10 pounds. What's up? Um, nothing special, just diet, not diet, but eating well, um, eating healthier and exercising more and even just getting out and walking. Um, I highly recommend if you have kids, a Bob stroller, those things are expensive, not as expensive as an up a baby, but still, um, it was like in the $700 range. It was worth every penny. We have been walking every single day, except if it's rains and that thing is a Cadillac. I love it. So anyways, just, you know, if you got some goals, just do one thing at a time, get out and walk every day, you know, cut out one you know, sweet that you're used to eating every day, something like that, you will see progress. Oh, also alcohol. Okay. I love alcohol. I do. I mean, I don't love it, but I enjoy having a drink. Okay. Um, pandemic times was hard times. Um, there was some alcohol like two to three times a week and we've cut that back to like two to three times a month, which was what we would normally drink in the first place. So that has helped tremendously. Uh, just cutting back on things. So anyways, nothing special, but I'm looking forward to having more, um, more pieces in my wardrobe that will fit me even if I were to continue to lose weight, which I will, because you just got to do it. So anyways, moving on, what else have I been working on? Well, the first thing is, and this is in my, uh, Hohe and Co bag. Holy crap. Um, and I've said this like every podcast, but I am a fangirl. I wish I had a million dollars so I could just buy all of her bags. I love this bean bag and the pink. I will say that um, the zipper is kind of annoying on this when you're knitting. So I think this will eventually turn into more of a purse for me once I don't have to have like a diaper clutch inside my purse. Hopefully another year or so. But I think that I'm going to turn with the strap. It comes with this beautiful strap. This this might be more of a clutch purse for me in the future. But I still oh, I love this bag. And I'm sorry, it's not vegan. It's straight up leather and it smells amazing. Uh, suede. Oh, it's, it's amazing. So anyways, I am working on my waffles with cream shawl again. This is in Malabrigo Rios in the Sunset Colorway. I had two skeins of this in my stash. I purchased it at my local yarn shop, Warm and Fuzzy, quite a while back. It's been sitting in my stash for a while. And I just thought it would make a fun waffles with cream that I can wear in the fall. And um, it would just be beautiful over a denim shirt or with one of my denim dresses. I love it. Um, this fun stitch marker is from Sucra Sucra Miniatures on Etsy. So check her out. It's a donut, y'all. Oh, that's the backside. But it's a sprinkle donut. What? She has adorable food stitch markers. I have quite a few of them and I love them. So check her out. But yeah, I wanted to do this in a um, more or a solid color so that you guys could see the stitch pattern a bit better. Um, it's really fun. It's the garter and ribbing and it's super easy. If you're a beginning knitter, you can, or if you know how to, you know, knit and purl, then you, this would be a great first shawl pattern, even for a beginner. So check it out. Uh, yeah. So I bought the, the two skeins previously, but then I think I need a third just because I want to make sure I have pom-poms and I want to finish it the correct size. So 
I picked up a third skein on the line. I'll try to write the yarn shop down here. I don't remember, but they had gorgeous yarns. Um, and I think it matches the other skeins pretty well, to be honest. I was a bit nervous about buying a, you know, a different dye lot online uh, years later after I bought this, but I'm very happy with the, the color consistency of the yarn. I think it'll look just fine in the shawl. If it were a sweater, I'd probably use this as just the ribbing around the ne neck and sleeves or whatever, um, just to be safe. But I think it's going to match really well. I think it's going to look great. And obviously as the pom-poms, it will look fine. Um, so yeah. So that is one thing I've been working on. Um, this, uh, yarn, I, so I had to buy this. And so of course, you can't just buy one skein of yarn that you need. Who does that? I mean, you got to buy some yarn you don't need. Duh. So I am working on something else. So when I bought that yarn, I decided that I needed this yarn as well. This is Hedgehog Fibers Merino DK. And I'm doing this so you can actually see the right color. Merino DK in the rose hip colorway. What? Is that not gorgeous? Holy crap, this neon pink and the splotches of the purple and the lime green, it was calling to me. It was calling to me and I had to give in and I got five skeins of this. Um, and I am going to make Ducat by Kate Davies. So I was gonna knit my swancho out of my beautiful skein cocaine yarn. But I wanted, I wanted to do a little palette cleanser because I had already done, uh, you know, just finished that color work sweater. And I know that I'm going to wear this sweater a lot in the spring and summer. And I just wanted to have a nice, fun, easy cast on for now. Not that this isn't going to be easy because it is. Oh, I love your yarn, Gina. Um, so I'm still going to cast that sweater on very soon. But I imagine wearing it more in like the fall and the winter and early spring and I am just ready. It's like been in the seventies here in Raleigh. So I am totally ready for some warmer weather, but I think this will be such a fun pullover. And the Ducat sweater is really cool because it's got like six to 10 inches of positive ease. So I, it will fit me even if I, you know, get a little bit more healthy and I'm excited about that. I like making sweaters that are going to fit me. I really love pullovers that just fit you in a range of sizes. I like versatile pieces for the wardrobe. So this sweater is so cute because it's got like a cinched in waist and it's cropped, but the big, you know, long sleeves. So it's totally my style. I cannot wait to cast it on. Um, so that is coming soon. I am going to be uh, working in our Wake Med vaccine clinic a few times a month. So my first shift is tomorrow. I'm super excited. And I have except that I have to be there at 6 a.m., which is like 38 minutes earlier than I normally need to be there, but it's all good. Um, so I'll be there at 6, and I'll be giving out COVID vaccines to people and vaccinating. So I'm so excited about that. But uh, so I'm doing that tomorrow, and I'm actually work working on Saturday on labor and delivery. So um, I might not be able to cast this on until like Sunday or Monday, but I am very much looking forward to it very much. So anyways, that'll be going on the needles real soon. And this is in a bag I made myself. Look how cute this is. You guys, this is my little, you know, Jane Austen bag that I made for me. I made you guys the little, the more sock shawl, like small one skein shawl, uh, bag in the previous episode, which I'll be giving away, but this was what I made myself and I love it. I, I ended up putting a handle on, which is super fun. And um, this is what my Ducat sweater is gonna be in. And that is the um, like Scottish word for like a pigeon coop. Um, and they also refer to like little flats and apartments as a Ducat. So I thought that was really cute. Always gonna be an Outlander theme, y'all, always. Um, so yeah. This is the lining, which is just some cotton fabric. I had quilting cotton fabric I had in stash from leftover from when I made scrub hats all the time. So I thought that was perfect to pair with this. And I am so happy with how this turned out. The, you know, I got these zippers on Amazon. I just Googled like 24 inch zipper or something. I don't know. And I love it. I'm very, very happy with this bag. This is uh, made out of Spoonflowers Dogwood Denim, which is such a nice 
Um, it's very soft fabric, but it's soft but sturdy. So this is perfect for a bag. And I actually ordered some more. So I will be making you guys some new like little project bags and things to boy. I'm not gonna be selling bags at this point. Like I, I, I mean, my bags are good. They're really good, but they're not 100% perfect. And I've done that selling products life and it's just not it's just not the life for me right now so but I will continue to make things for fun and give them away so make sure you are subscribed and everything so that way we can do more giveaways if I get a certain amount of subscribers and views then we gonna get monetized and you know not that I'm trying to like make money off this I'm not at all but it would be super cool if we could because then I could get more things to give away so just give me a Give me a ring on the bell and a like. That would be really cool. So anyways, it's faux free. It's faux free. Yeah, so fun stuff right there. I love this bag. And oh, I'm also making my husband some, I made him pillows out of this fabric before for his bonus room where he has his drum set and all that fun stuff. But um, I'm making him some new pillows for his office downstairs. So hopefully that spoon flower fabric arrives before the next time I podcast so I can at least show you the fun fabric and what I have in mind. So... The next thing I'm gonna show you guys is an old knitting project. This is Porch Swing by the Plucky Knitter. I love this shawl. It is such a versatile shawl. Um, it's super long and I either wear it like, I usually wear it like this. This is just, you know, kind of the, the style of how I like to wear my shawls. I'm really into this um, around the neck draped look. I think it's super fun. But I love how it looks like like flower petals almost. It's really cute, so cute. And this is knit out of um, Plucky Knitter Sophisticate and it's held double. I'm almost positive the colorway is Feather Duster, but I don't know for sure. Um, it's been a long time. It's on my Ravel Ravelry project page if you really wanna know. Um, or you can wear it like this, which I'm gonna give you that three, six, ooh, whoa. Keep going, keep going, uh, which I really love um, because you can wear it over like a cute dress in the summer and it's not too hot and I, or, or the spring. And I just think it's super cute. I really love this shawl. It's so much fun. I will say it is cast on from the bottom up, which was at the time a pain in the butt. Um, I'm a more, I feel like I'm an even more advanced knitter now. So you have to cast on between 200 to 300 stitches. That's a lot. And it wasn't fun to start, but once you got into it and started knitting it, it was more fun. Um, so yeah, and there was some short row shaping down here to get this scoop, um, but it's all garter and it's beautiful and I love it. So anyways, this is such a beautiful, versatile piece and I wear this a lot. So I wanted to show that to you guys. I'll keep showing you some of my old knits because I got lots of them and lots of things to share. So. Anyways, moving on to the next thing. So I got some more um, stash enhancement from my girl Gina at Skein Cocaine. What's up? Uh, very excited for that. Um, so first thing is, and she doesn't have these available anymore. Sorry. Y'all got to follow her on Instagram at Skein Cocaine so that you can scoop out her beautiful yarn when she posts it because it don't keep. Yes, that shit sells. Okay. So you got to get on it. Look at this mini skein set. Oh my gosh. This is her spring 2021 mini skein set. And it's just gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. Okay. You need this in your life, but you can't have it now. You got to go follow her, man. I'm telling you. What? They are 80-20 um, fingering weight yarn. Um, that's 80, 80 merino, superwash merino, 20% nylon. And 40 yards each. They're micro minis. This is adorable. I don't know if this will be like a, in a, my blanket or a, a mini project, like one of those projects used for mini stains or like even a fun hat. This would make everything beautiful. So it doesn't matter. I could knit literally a turd out of this and it would be beautiful. So might do it. No, I won't. But Thank you, Gina. I love it. I love it. You y'all got to go follow her so you can get on her yarn. And I have more of her stash to show you right now. It's gorgeous. Um, next thing, she was so sweet and ended up sending me this adorable 
Coco Knits Craft Caddy. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Gina. This is awesome. This thing has become like my designing tote. And you would think that since it's like made out of paper, that it would be like flimsy or like prone to fall apart or whatever. You can actually put this joker in the washer. Um, you take the leather handles off, which are removable because they're just uh, tied on, but they're sturdy. Oh, you can wash this, what? It's awesome. I love this thing. And it has two pockets on this side. It's got one pocket on this side. It's got all kinds of pockets on the inside. And I love the leather handles. These are like an add-on normally, but I think that Gina sells them. She has these on her website at skankocaine.com. Um, these leather handles, um, you, you normally buy them separate, but Gina has them together with the bag, I'm pretty sure. So that way you need the handles because I used to have a bag like this, a Fringe Supply Company mini porter bag. But that joker was so hard to hold because the handles were like just a strap like this going from here to here. And you could like hold it like that, but you couldn't really scoop it on both sides. And it was like, and it was not fun. So I actually de-stashed it at some point. But this is kind of like it, but even better, like way better. And that one was green too, which is funny. So this was the bag that I didn't know I needed. And now it's my designing tote. It's got all these pockets in here. I've got pens. It's got like three pockets on this side, one specifically for pens. I've got a pen and um, nail file over there. I've got my scissors and notions pouch and my lotion. I, I'm addicted to this Glossier um, U lotion. This is like the smell of heaven. Anyways, and my lip balm and you know, my tag for my yarn. And I even have on the bottom, this cool graph paper notebook that I got off Amazon. And I don't remember, you know, Amazon, you don't know what, who you bought it from, but there's this ruler. What? And it's got graph paper. And I use this for like designing and writing patterns when I want to um, write it out before I put it on the computer and stuff in pencil. So sometimes I just need to, you know, sometimes you just need to write on paper. So anyways, thank you so much, Gina. I love this thing. It has brought me so much joy. It's it's now my designing tote and I love it. So thanks. So I want to show you guys the beautiful yarn that I got from her and talk about my new shawl pattern. So let me tell you about this yarn, y'all. This is one of her perfect pairing sets in the colorway seashells. What? What? So this is Surrey Alpaca and silk and this fingering weight this is like 328 yards and this is merino nylon and it is slub yarn and look how pretty this surrey alpaca is softer than a baby's butt like i love it this is next to skin soft if you have sensitivities to furry yarn but you love furry yarn this is the yarn because i i could knit a thong out of this no i mean i wouldn't but you might could yeah, uh, it would be that soft. I'm telling you, it'd be disgusting, but soft. <laughs> so anyways, sorry, I'm uh, crazy today. It's, I'm on round three of filming this. I told you guys, so bear with me. But this slub yarn is so much fun. It's just like springy, like my, when you pull a curl from my curly hair, I can't show you right now because it's up, but uh, this has been such a joy to knit with and work with. I cannot wait to buy more of this. Um, Thank you for this beautiful yarn, Gina. And they, these colors, like it's like pink, but kind of like the brightest or like the, the lightest coral. And it's got the greens running through there and the more burgundy colors. Oh, it's so pretty. And this was not my first pick just because I always gravitate towards the same color first. And then sometimes I have to like talk myself into like just Sway, straying just a little bit. It's still pink, still my colors, but I had to like kind of stray outside of my, my normal go-to. And I'm so glad I did because this is gorgeous. But I am working on a new shawl. And this shawl is so much fun. I'm going to show it to you guys. It's not out yet or ready yet. So just, you know, stay patient, please. Look how pretty this is, you guys. Oh my gosh. Her yarn knit up is like heaven. And this is going to be an asymmetrical shawl. It's super lightweight in these yarns. 
super soft. So it'd be, I cannot wait to wear this on the beach. That's what I imagine. And obviously because of the colorway seashells, but also because I just think it's going to be such a perfect shawl to wear, like with a lightweight outfit or summer outfit. It's a beautiful summer shawl. So I am so excited. And this stitch pattern that I'm doing in here, it's this, it's garter and lace basically. And it's got this really fun, I don't know if you can see it, but it's an umbrella stitch in there. So that is super fun. And I love it. I really love this. Um, I'm very happy with how it's turning out. And um, I'm not going to tell you guys the name yet, but you can give me a guess in the comments below if you want to. It does have something to do with the Gilmore Girls, just the name. So uh, yeah, so give me a guess and tell me what you think. But if you're a fan of the show. But yes, I cannot wait to finish this. I love this. Thank you again, Gina, for this gorgeous yarn. I cannot, I cannot, ugh, can't wait to knit more on this shawl and finish it up. Hopefully by the next time that I podcast, but we'll see. And I'll, you know, I'll let you know next time. So, and I do podcast about every two weeks. So just, you know, stay tuned. If you subscribe, you can get notifications when I upload a new video. So moving on to the next thing. Okay, so I did work just a little bit on my Sassanac socks. And this is the um, Sassanac colorway from Nomadic Yarns. And it is her Brit sock. So it's a BFL nylon and it's a three ply. These are signature needle arts needles. Let me tell you guys, these things are awesome. They're sharp. I like, I usually push the, the needle with my finger when I'm doing magic loop, I think when I'm towards the end. That joker hurt me. I like got um, a puncture wound from this. Like I, like it hurt. I had to put a bandaid on my finger. So be warned, these needles do come with a warning. The warning is real. If you are a knitter who wanted to uh, possibly stab someone, these would be the needles. But I don't, I don't advise stabbing anyone. But if you wanted to, I mean, I'm just saying these are the needles. So I had a heel flap in here and I decided um, I didn't want to fool with that. So I ripped it out. So I'm probably going to do like a contrast color um, afterthought heel and possibly a toe. We'll see. But these are, these are for my husband. I haven't knit a lot on them. Hopefully by the next time I'll actually like have a whole sock to show you guys. I apologize. Sometimes it's just fun to knit the tube and then go back and put the heel in. So I decided that I would rather do that than keep going with the heel flap and gusset. Even though I really love the way a true heel flap and gusset fits, um, I also just enjoy knitting sock tubes and adding in the heels and doing afterthought heel. So, and those fit fine too. Um, not quite as much as I like the traditional one, but there you go. And that is in this Erin Lane's bag little sock sack that I have. It's just, just enough to put in a ball of yarn. So there's that. Uh, moving on. Let's see. So let's talk about, before I get into the giveaway winners, I did want to just do a couple of shout outs. Um, first of all, I wanted to say hey to Gina, of course, at Skin Cocaine. Go check out her podcast. She is the Misadventures of Skin Cocaine. She is a lot of fun to watch. And she is my hometown neighbor. Um, She's in the Blacksburg, Virginia area, and I grew up in Roanoke, or Salem, Virginia, which is essentially Roanoke, so she's my hometown neighbor, okay, so that's been a lot of fun getting to know her and getting to know all of you, so go check out her podcast, uh, Misadventures of Skating Cocaine, because it's, it's good, it's good. And I also wanted to say hey to Akira at Knitting Annihilator. You are adorable. Um, she's got some super cute knits and she's a lot of fun to follow on Instagram too. So y'all should check out her podcast. And I wanted to say hey to Barb at Naughty Yarnies. She does a lot of crochet and she is super sweet and upbeat. And it has been a joy watching her podcast as well. So go and check them out if you uh, want some new people to, you know, to watch and take a look at. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for all of your support too. Uh, um, from, you know, my new podcast, it's been such a joy doing this and meeting all you guys. So I just wanted to give a few shout outs there. And so let's get to the giveaway winner. So the winner of this adorable sock set that I sewed up for you with this lining and this gorgeous skein cocaine yarn that I I am giving away 
even though it is beautiful and I love it. It's a one of a kind colorway. Um, the winner of this is Whips, Hoes, and Foes. So send me an email at uh, jenbughandmade at gmail.com or an Instagram DM at jenbughandmade on Instagram with your address so I can get this sent out to you. So exciting. Ugh, I love, I am really happy to give away things. Even if it's so gorgeous, I want to keep it. But it, my heart is really happy giving things away. So I'm very happy. Um, and there will be more giveaways. I'm going to try to do a giveaway every podcast. So make sure you stay tuned. The next giveaway. So next time on podcast, I'll pick a winner. But I have a little Notions, or it's actually a big Notions uh, pouch that I made for you guys. And this is, this is some fabric from my local yarn shop, uh, So There in Anger, which is awesome. Look at this bee fabric. I saw this in her shop and it's Riley Blake fab fabric. If you're a fabric person, you'll know who Riley Blake is. Oh, I love it. So I made a scrub hat out of this and I showed you guys. And with the leftovers, I made this cute bag. And I love that I put the red zipper out. Like that is not my go-to, but this is what I had in hand. And I was like, well, I think that'll look good. I love it. I think it's adorable and the little handle so it's easy to carry around. So you're gonna get this large Notions pouch. You could actually put uh, probably a one sock yarn in here or one skein of sock yarn too if you wanted to knit socks, but I would use it as a Notions pouch. That was the intended idea. And you're gonna get this lovely red skein of, I'm pretty positive this is knit collage. Um, this was actually given to me for free by someone, kind soul on Ravelry, who was giving away free yarn. I'm like, heck yeah, give me some free yarn. Um, and I would totally knit with this. I would, like I would make, if I were knitting out of this, I would make some cute red chunky mittens. I think that would be adorable. But I shall give it to you because it makes me happy and I wanna keep doing fun giveaways. I'm pretty positive it's knit collage because it has this gold thing where the tag was and my other knit collage skeins have that and this is totally their style. I'm almost positive. So you will get this skein of yarn and this fun notions pouch. So comment below and tell me what you're either working on right now or you're going to be casting on. What are you excited to knit? What are you like currently knitting on and excited about or about to knit? Let me know. So anyways, you guys, that is it for today. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for coming back. Once again, if you, if you please ring that bell and do a subscribe and give me a comment um, about the giveaway. So we can do more giveaways in the future and get more things out there for you guys. It has been a lot of fun talking to you again, and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care.